This is the essence of what cells do. And now that I have you hooked, let's get to the nitty gritty. So, the GMTK Game Jam. It is a well-known jam hosted by Mark Brown. And the theme for this jam is Join Together, an uninspiring but not hopeless topic. Step one for a jam theme like this is to root out all the generic ideas that have now been planted in your brain. This was not easy, and for quite some time I was stuck somewhere between Rio and Bad Piggies. Either you combine pieces to make a vehicle, or you combine mechanics to make your character fit various scenarios. We got one guy here who can shoot guns. We have this other guy who can jump really high. You take their combined abilities, combine them, now suddenly, let's say you have a really big cliff here that you need to get to the other side. This guy can go boing, and this guy will go And then you'll never believe what happens, you get all the way to the other side. Rolling with this idea for the next meanwhile, I did some rudimentary character design, made a hellish little model, and loaded up the latest long-term support build of Unity. I've always preferred 3D to 2D in my games, uh, but given the nature of my idea, 2D would be the most efficient option. I settled on a sort of hybrid, which gives the game a nice aesthetic, I suppose. I don't know, people ate that up. Then I started prototyping by divvying up the abilities into different scripts that would activate or deactivate, depending on whether or not the associated character is connected to our central amalgamation. While running some tests on the shooter script, things went a little awry and planted the seed for a forthcoming idea that would change the game's entire direction. Oh no! Or maybe I'm just making that connection in hindsight, who's to say? So magnets, pretty cool, right? Game designers love magnets, especially when you wave them against all their old hard drives, they go bonkers. Anyway, in my new idea, there would be little magnets scattered all about the level that you'd have to seek out, collect, and place into a weighted trigger at the end of the level. The neat part would be that some areas may be inaccessible by regular means, so you would have to juggle around your collection of magnets and use them to complete puzzles and reach other areas of the level. A puzzle platformer kind of game, if you will. You get the idea. And I still think it's a fantastic idea, but here's my issue. I'm not a good game designer, I'm not a good programmer, and though it sounds simple, and most likely is, I have no idea how to properly approach this, so after wasting a ton of time trying to figure out the optimal way to program it, I gave up. So I took a different approach on a similar but far less complex concept. The player, you presumably, can shoot green magnets out of a cannon. These magnets stick together and form structures. However, these structures have rigid bodies and can be pushed around. And if two of these structures collide, they will connect and become an even larger structure. Fairly simple code too, I have a prefab with all the right gear that gets instantiated when the mouse button is pressed. When it makes contact with another ball, it determines which ball has been around longer and that one becomes the parent of the other one. I had a lot of fun with this, especially when I started messing with the base prefab. Oh no. Oh no! I think the game runs just fine. I started working on some primitive UI and other jazz to liven up the game. I initially wanted enemies, so I added the ability to switch tools and shoot regular cannonballs. I also added an eraser tool for cleaning up magnets and cannonballs. I just used a coroutine that I named Sloop that lerps balls both in position and size until they are sucked up by a cannon and destroyed. And wow, that is one hell of a sentence. They're all stacking up here, right? Go and I erase them all. <laughs> but I got picky. I said, what if I could individually vacuum up the magnets instead of just taking the whole thing? And this started me down a very dangerous road. Simply making one object the parent of another object is great for putting things together, but it is terrible for trying to tear things apart. At least without filling your console with countless errors. See, if I just destroy the game object, then it will destroy all the child game objects beneath it. And if it's the root object, it will destroy the whole thing anyway. So I thought I should detach all of the child game objects and set their parents to the grandparent, or the next oldest child in the case that the game object is the root node. Though this whole thing sounds like a broken home, the best way to think about it is more akin to getting a promotion, because your boss... died. Now this took a long time to get working. Like I said, there was the whole countless errors thing that I told you about. Secondly though, once I did clear up some of those errors and got it at least visually working, I came to the tragic realization that it's possible for the root object to be the parent of magnets that it is no longer even connected to. I tried a lot of solutions. First things first, use on collision stay to detect if they are still together. Could not figure that out. I tried giving each magnet a list of all objects they are touching and how to react depending on the situation. That quickly got out of hand. I tried using transform that detached children, but then the structure would just fall apart and freeze the game for a few seconds. A less than desirable solution. So how did I solve such a devastating conundrum? Well folks, 
The absolute and ironic truth is Unity's joint system. Fixed joints to be precise. After scrapping about 90% of the code, implementing these, and then scrapping the other 10%, we have a functioning system. It should be noted, however, that by leaving our joints to play under the watchful eyes of Dr. TJ Unity Physics, we accept that it might have some quirky behaviors. I think the most interesting side effect of this is that they are all very wiggly in large chains. I spent the next few hours fine-tuning the physics settings on the magnets and adding in some rockets so that there is some potential for variety in gameplay style. And this is when I did all of my polishing in general. Depth of field, which you can't see because I never got around to adding proper backgrounds. Pink sky, made with the help of this tutorial. I made the character blue to contrast the pink sky. I added a bunch of sound effects. I added music that I had sitting in my non-copyright songs folder. And finally, with the deadline approaching in high velocity, I made a level with some tutorial pop-ups and named the game Sensitium. A word that I found after googling what is is called when two cells join. I managed to upload a WebGL build before the clock hit 11, and uploaded a PC and Mac build shortly thereafter. Take your time. Hours later, after the site rebounded from the weight of all the jammers, I even uploaded some screenshots and themed art to spice up my page a little bit. And that's my game. Just a little advice for potential players though, the yellow things are checkpoints. If you click restart, you'll return to the most recent one. And the restart button exists because sometimes the game breaks when you have too many items in the scene at once. So that's essentially a fix button. And uh, that's it. Go play it. Go.